بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم موسى عليه السلام Many of the scholars said this took place after they refused Bani Israel to enter the Holy Land al Ard al-Muqaddasa. So Musa alayhi salam did not very much give up on them. He still advised them. He still gave them good content, good nasiha advice. And after he gave a very powerful speech, one of the people of Bani Israel comes to Musa alayhi salam and he asks him a question. He says, Oh Musa, who is the most educated person in the world? And why is it so strange? And why is it a highlight here? Because having the opportunity out of hundreds of thousands of people to ask Musa a question, maybe you want to calculate what the question would be. You don't always have a chance to ask people of influence, people of knowledge. You know, you book an appointment with a doctor. It takes you maybe a week or two weeks and sometimes longer. You want to ask the right questions. You do your homework. I remember طبعا, nowhere comparing myself to anyone, but just an example, I have a, a YouTube video that is like over 50 minutes long. 50 minutes, relatively long for a lecture. يعني. And I remember that was many years ago, and the comment section, the person asks, what kind of watch are you wearing? So I'm like, you probably watched over 50 minutes. Okay, because the first minute my watch was not showing, maybe it was the minute 27. Right? Is it what kind of watch? And I'm like, subhanAllah, if I were to generally misal, reply, okay, is this really why? Maybe he would desperately want to say, Allah, right? But the point being is that make sure you ask the right question. So this man goes to Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, who's the most educated person about Allah and religion? Not like science and stuff like that, about God. So Musa alayhi salam, he answers quickly and he says, and he says, me, I am, right? What's more accurate? Uh, help me. Is it me or I am? Me? Oh, who thinks I am? Raise. Who thinks me? Okay, I'm gonna ask the English teacher. It's okay. Now, what's the more accurate? I am. I am. I am. That's it. Zahar al haq Truth has prevailed. All right. So you like you had one question to ask Sister Sukaina. That's a question you ask her. <laughs> but there's benefit, inshallah. So Musa alayhi salam says, I am. فَعَاتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ Allah did not like that. But Musa alayhi salam, you know, like common sense, he can see where he came from. I'm a prophet of God. I'm the only human being that ever spoke to God in, on earth. I have the Torah, right? Like, it's, me, I am. So عَاتَبَهُ Allah did not like that. So Allah revealed to Musa right away. Correction right away. He said, Ya Musa, Basically, Musa should have said, Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best. That's the attitude of the believers. You don't know something, you're not sure of, you just say Allah knows best, Allahu A'lam. So then Allah tells Musa, no, there is someone who knows things you do not know about religion. Allahu Akbar. He says, yes, Abdi, I have a servant and a slave of mine. في مجمع البحرين, at a place, a junction of two seas. He has knowledge which you do not have. But what would Musa alayhi salam do at this point? And that's something we learn from Musa. You guys ready? Many times we do mistakes, but what do we do? And it, that theme comes up again. We double down or we try to justify it or you know why I did this because according, because think about it, you know, Allah, think, you know, Allah, you know that, you know, I speak to you. Khalas. He did not justify his point. He learned that he kind of had a shortcoming. So he asked Allah, كَيْفَ السَّبِيلُ إِلَيْهِ Ya Allah, teach me how to get to that person. He didn't just say, I'm sorry, I apologize, I will never do this again. He was so eager, Musa, Kalimullah, to learn more about the religion. So what do we close the door on with this point? Never say you have received enough Islamic education. Never say, I know enough. Never in your life will you say that. If our Musa, alayhi salam, our Nabi, he says, Ya Allah, tell me where is he at? The one who received revelation, knows every word of it, spoke to Allah, he wants more. All of us need to know more. And there's no excuses. May Allah grant us all wisdom and strength. Say Ameen. Six classes in semester, full-time student, no excuses. Make them five and take the sixth one, something that makes you grow. Keep the six, but add something to your schedule. You have to have a daily dose or a weekly dose of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now, ready for this? Musa alayhi salam asked Allah, how do I find him? And Allah tells him something very interesting. He says, get a fish. Fish, okay. Get, no, I don't have a fish. You're like, oh, is he, I really have a fish? I don't have a fish. This is my fish, okay? Fishy fish, okay? <laughs> All right? So he said, get a fish. وضحها في مكتل and put it in a basket. Okay. And walk with the basket. Wherever the fish that is dead, it's a dead fish. Whenever the fish leaves, you know that that man is there. So we start seeking knowledge by being humble. طب <laughs> why? Ah, uh, did we start? Like Allah told you to do this? I, okay, I will. Many times it happens, right? Especially students of knowledge, they try to learn about the religion. We're very firm, right? Very difficult to change our mind and opinion and stuff like that. And it's very difficult to accept things. I'm not sure if I shared this with you guys before, but I remember when I was a lot younger, I used to study very much the Hanbali fiqh, okay? And according to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, if you eat camel meat, I don't know why I did this to myself. <laughs> Okay, if you eat camel meat, you have to redo your wudu. Like, your, if you have wudu, your wudu is gone. What? Yes, if you eat camel meat. So I remember Sheikh Muhammad Mahmoud is an imam in Windsor, and he was asking the students, okay, so tell us some of the stuff that you know, breaks your wudu. So one guy says, you know, uh, sleeping. One guy says this, said that. So I said, eating camel meat. So one guy's like, what? Right, like what do you mean eating camel? It doesn't even make sense. I said, La wallah, it does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I say the hadith and I told them, Wallah, in grade eight, in my exam, that question came and I got the right answer. And he's like, no, I said, yes, no. So the Sheikh Muhammad, he was like, man, these youngsters, right? There's no like, really? What should I have done? Or what should have the other guy done? He should have said, I never heard that before. Do you have evidence to that? That's it. Right? And if I never knew, I should have said Allahu A'la. But like fighting and, and, and I was talking like it breaks the wudu, there's none negotiable. You give me a drumstick of a camel, it doesn't have a drumstick, it's whatever. Right? I'm redoing my wudu. So then the Shaykh Muhammad, he smiled, he said, Ya Jama'ah, there's a difference of opinion. So Musa alayhi salam, Allah tells him, put a fish in the bag, the basket. I'll put a fish in the basket. And that's how respectful we should be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam, he tells Bani Israel, Bani Israel, I'm heading for a path of seeking knowledge. Very humbling from Musa alayhi salam. But Musa does not go by himself. He goes with Yusha ibn Nun radiallahu an or alayhi salam. A young man, a young boy to accompany Musa alayhi salam. Now, really quick advice for all of us from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Try your best to travel by yourself. Uh, so to avoid traveling by yourself. Once again. Try your best to avoid traveling by yourself. The sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, try to have, try, I think it's haram, try to have at least three people. Okay, try to have three people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, al-musafir shaytan, al-musafiran shaytanan, al-thalatha musafirun. Okay, so then Musa alayhi has Yusha ibn Nun. Okay, what's his task? Yusha ibn Nun has one task. That's one, what is it? He will hold the, what? The basket. Musa alayhi salam tells Yusha, whenever you no longer see the fish, you let me know. That's all what he has to do. Tamam, tamam. Let's go. Bismillah. You know, professional development Musa alayhi salam is going through. Then they travel. And they travel. He says, Hukuba. He says to Yusha and to the people, Wallahi, if it takes me years till I find him, I will spend years until I find him. That was his passion to learn. So all you who read the Quran, or try to understand the religion and the deen, and you're struggling, be patient. Even if it takes you years, you will get there insha'Allah. Fair enough, don't give up on learning the deen, because many of us don't give up on many other things, right? Today, uh, in front of the barber, uh, a, a, a guy, he had his car stuck in the snow. So as a simple example, he tried, he was flooring it, oh, it doesn't work like that. He went out, he started rubbing the ice, Musharraf ish, he brought salt, he put the salt, he never, doesn't give up, I need to get my car. Right? It's my ride in this life. No exaggeration. Your, our desperation for the deen and the knowledge is far greater than this guy getting his car out of that snow. You see what I'm saying? Look, I'm not going to let go of it. I'm going to keep trying. And I'm like, no, forget it, bro. 
I was right behind him. He said, bro, you know what? Take the keys. He will never do that. He probably call Carvana and stuff, whatever, accept any price and then just pick up the car and leave, right? He's like, what's Carvana? No problem. Bismillah. So then Musa alayhi salam, he goes, travels with Yusha ibn Nun. Hatta ataya ila sakhra. They arrive to like a rock. A, a big rock they want to rest by. So he said, you know what? Let's just relax here and sleep. فَوَضَعَ مُوسَى رَأْسَهُ فَنَامُ Musa alayhi salam placed his head and he had what? A nap. During his nap, ladies and gentlemen, what happened? تَحَرَّكَ السَّمَكْ The samak that was dead went back to life. Allahu Akbar. And who's watching? <gasps> who's watching? Yusha. Oh. And then it, and it started going. Saraba. It made like a tunnel. Like you can actually leave the trace behind. It's not like it just went. No. It left a clear track through the water. It's as if the sea split once again. The sea split once again. Just like back when Pharaoh times, right? So Yusha Ibn Nun saw this. Obviously it was very impressive. And then what does he have to do? When, right when Musa alayhi salam wakes up, let him know. Musa alayhi salam wakes up and Yusha does not tell him. Subhanallah. Let's continue. They kept walking and walking and walking until Musa alayhi salam became hungry. And he told Yusha, Atina ghada'ana. Bring the ghada, which is the food. Okay? And just something very important here. For the Arab in the crowd, usually ghada is what in English? Lunch. But ghada, what does it really mean here? Breakfast. Who's had breakfast? Hassan, may Allah bless you and grant you breakfast from Jannah. I mean, right? So what am I trying to say here? Arab, just don't be too full of yourself. Ghada, had a lunch, lunch. <laughs> you don't know, sometimes it's a different language, different wording, different culture. You see that? So if you're not sure, go verify. So ghada'ana, which we all, almost all of us here that speak the Arabic and we speak this accent, ghada'ana, we meant lunch. But here ghada'ana, wallahu alam, meant breakfast. Bil ghadati wal ashi, during the day and during the night. So when Yusha ibn Nun is going back to the lunchbox, right? What does he find? Nothing, the fish is gone. I mean, there's other food, the breakfast or whatever, but the actual fish, he's like, oh my God. So look how he says it. He says to Musa, أَرَأَيْتَ إِذْ أَوَيْنَا إِلَى الصَّحْرِ Musa, remember when we were resting near the rock? You see how he's beginning? He's like, yes. فَإِنِّي نَسِيتُ الْحُوتِ I, I forgot to tell you, the fish actually left the basket and it made like a tunnel and went to the ocean. And this was a way after, like they walked for a while until Musa became hungry and so on. So Musa alayhi salam, would he snap on you? That was the only task I gave you. The one thing is to see whether the fish will leave the basket. What a loser you are. You think you'll be successful? You think you will find a righteous spouse in your life? You will always, well, I know why mom and dad told you to come along with me. Subhanallah. Right? Some people, we exit and he breaks the individual. Breaks them. But we have to be patient. May Allah make every father and mother patient, Ya Rab. May Allah make every father practice why he preaches, Ya Rab. <laughs> ya Rab. Talking is easy. Kateer said, Wallah. Come on guys, Qiyamu layl and After Mahadar, may Allah forgive us. May Allah protect us. Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah. May Allah walk the talk, Ya Allah. Allah in every teacher. Say I mean, Ya Akhi. <laughs> okay, so then Yusha ibn Nun, he says that to Musa alayhi salam, and you get to appreciate Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik, he used to be the servant, not of Musa, the servant of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas says, no one else says, Anas says, he says, I worked for the Prophet for how long? Kam sana? He was a servant to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was an employee for how long? Ten years. Ten years, Ahsan, to me Allah granted the companionship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forever. Ten years. He says, Wallahi, he never rebuked me over something I should have done, which I did not do or something I should have not done and I end up doing. Like never rebuked me. لماذا فعلت كذا وكذا? I was a kid, as a child, and he moved along with that and Anas became one of the greatest Sahaba ever. So may Allah grant us wisdom and strength. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Right? And sometimes, you know, uh, you know, with parenting comes a lot of lessons, like don't go after every t detail the child does. I feel like all the kids are paying attention. <laughs> well, I'm like, let me just stop. This is, this is a double-edged sword. Okay, anyhow kids, just listen to your parents. Khalas? All right, but parents, just be patient, inshallah. Okay, so then, what does Yusha say? Something very interesting. He says, وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا He says, the one who made me forget to tell you about the fish is the devil. 
Ah, it's in the Quran. Yes, it is possible the devil may cause you to forget things. How? By making you think of other things. He will not go to your memory and delete. He doesn't do stuff like that. But what he will do is that he puts other thoughts. So let's say you're, for example, a parent. I don't want to tell kids anymore. I feel like I'm putting so many ideas in their, in their mind. Especially that my kids are here, right? So let's say at work, okay? <laughs> okay, your manager uh, tells you to submit an, ass uh, an assignment, a project, okay? So then you're supposed to submit that project, but then you just have a thought, like, let me just check the Champions League score between PSG and, uh, who did they play? Real Madrid, so, uh, let me just see the score really quick. So this thought might have been inserted by the waswasa of the shaitan. Fair enough. What does Allah say? وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيد So mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can, it strengthens your memory. خلاص, what do you think about that? Free consultation service, alhamdulillah. And take these things very serious, wallah. I remember I, uh, a person, he tell them uh, how to have good anger management. You're like, for example, if you're standing, sit down. Like, I, I know this, wallah, I know this. Yani, with all respect to the sunnah of Rasulullah But tell me other things. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, when you're angry, remain silent. Yeah, I know this, but give me laugh. So did you try it? So here, Rasulullah, Allah is teaching us, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتُ Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it protects you from the devil. Okay. Musa alayhi salam, how does he react? He says, ذَلِكَ مَا كُنَّا نَبْغْ That's exactly what we wanted to know. Where the fish leaves. So he went right to the rock, and then he walked out on what? Around what? Or close to what? On what path? The path, ahsant, on the tunnel, on that path of that fish, they walked and they walked and they walked until they found a man covering himself. Right? He's covering his body. Not fully recognizable. So Musa alayhi salam says, Salamu alaykum. So this man looks back, he says, وَأَنَّ بِأَرْضِكَ السَّلَامُ He's like, how do you know, Salamu alaykum? This was Al-Khidr. How do you know? This shows that the land that he was in, Al-Khidr, was not a land of true believers, right? That say salam and so on. Or at least this greeting was not there at the minimum. So then he's asked him, where are you from? Who are you? He said, Ana Musa. So Al-Khidr says, Musa Bani Israel? I heard about you. You're Musa, the, the prophet from the children of Israel? He said, yes. So then Musa alayhi salam tells him, I came here to seek knowledge from you. Allah told me that you know things I do not know. So then Al-Khidr tells him, I want to tell you something. I do have things you do not have and you have things I do not have. But my problem with the things that I have is that you cannot handle having. You see that? Is that you can't handle, if, if, what you're try, if your purpose of this trip is to understand and you want me to pass my knowledge onto you, you will not comprehend it. It's way too next level. It's something Allah gave me. She's like, no, I got you. I, 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 I want to try. He said, لن تستطيع معي صبر. You can't, you can't be patient. He's like, no, no, I, I promise. <clears throat> I'll be a good student. <clears throat> I will follow you. I'll do everything. He's like, okay. Under one condition. What's that condition? Come with me, but under one condition. What is it? You don't ask any questions until the Q&A session starts. Don't, in the middle of my session, brother, لا, I, I'm done, Q&A session, ask. Fair enough? خلاص, alhamdulillah. He says, فَإِنِ اتَّبَعْتَنِي فَلَا تَسْأَلْنِي عَنْ شَيْنْ حَتَّى أُحْدِثَ لَكَ مِنْهُ ذِكْرَ Until I open up the floor for questions and so on. Oh, jazakallah khair. Someone wants to go to Jannah, inshallah. <laughs> May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair. Amin. Bismillah. Jazakallah khair. All right, thank you so much. The session worked, yeah. it's working, it's working. I see the fruits, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all our kids, say ameen. Okay, so he says, فَلَا And don't ask me any questions until I open up the floor. So bismillah, let's proceed. Musa alayhi salam takes this road. He walks with who? Al-Khidr, is that his actual name? Some say no, this is actually a, a title that he had. Al-Khidr means green. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says an authentic narration, if he were to sit on a barren land, a dead land, he will turn it into green, like the grass comes out, becomes a fertile ground, subhanAllah. So then Musa and Al-Khidr, they walk and they travel and they travel until Al-Khidr notices a ship, a boat. 
So while he's walking, he sees the boat, the people on the boat, they notice who? Al-Khidr, not Musa, Al-Khidr. Hey, Khidr, what's up? What's up? They're friends, they know each other. So then they told Al-Khidr, do you want to ride? He's like, yeah, sure. Al-Khidr and Musa, alayhi salam, they go in. How much did they pay? How much? Free. Free for you. They, everyone gets charged. Everybody has to pay. But Al-Khidr, you know what? For all the good stuff that you do, whatever we know you, etc. No charge for you. And Okay, you know, a companion passed. No problem this time, right? So you walk onto that ship. Then Musa, alayhi salam, is sitting with Al-Khidr. And Al-Khidr sees a bird. That bird was drinking from the sea. So Al-Khidr tells Musa, Musa, my knowledge plus your knowledge plus the knowledge of all creation in comparison to Allah's knowledge is like the comparison of that drop of water the bird drank to the ocean. This is how vast Allah's knowledge is. Yani Allah tells us in the Quran, if all the trees were turned into pens, and all the oceans were turned into ink, and you use the pen to dip it into the ink and to write the wisdom and knowledge of Allah, you will run out of pens and ink and you're not done writing the knowledge of Allah. Even if you multiply it by seven. Allahu Akbar. We're dealing with Allah Jalla Jalal. You appreciate His greatness, Allah al alim So while they're walking, no, they're not walking, they're, while on their ship, Al-Khidr takes precaution. Al-Khidr is probably doing something that looks very shady. Al-Khidr is acting up in a way that can really got, get people in trouble. So all of a sudden he, he comes close to the ground, gets like a hammer or so, and he breaks part of the base of the boat. What? Why would you do that? How bad? I hope it's not leaking. It's leaking. <laughs> he broke it in a way that there's a hole now and water is gushing slowly from that boat. So Musa alayhi salam tells Al-Khidr, why would you do that? What are you doing? They just got us on the ship and it, it's wrong. In addition, they got us in for free. Like, come on, man. This is like wrong, wrong, wrong. He said, I told you no comments, no questions until we're done. So Musa said, oh, I actually, this time I forgot. Well, I forgot. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I forgot. I will never ask you again any questions until you explain. Okay, let's proceed, Musa. So then what happens to the ship, to the boat? Eventually the boat, the people say, oh my God, we got a leak. Oh, these were fishermen. So that's their main source of income. So they had to, you know, take it aside, stop, no income for that day or that week, Allah alam, until they fix the boat. So they go, oh guys, stop, emergency landing, emergency landing. And then they stop. And then Musa and Fir'aun, they leave the boat. Khudr. Khudr. Ahsantum. I love that. I love that. And I will not cut that, whoever is watching. The camera is moving. Is, uh, Ala, the camera is moving. It's like a jinn. <laughs> like there's a sensor. Okay. I said, Musa and Fir'aun, and wonderful men and women, may Allah grant you all Jannah, said, Musa and Khadr. Right? I'm not going to go and say there's a difference of opinion. <laughs> Okay, I gave you guys, uh, or some of you that attended a few years ago, I gave a lecture about the Battle of Uhud. Okay, so I gave the Battle of Uhud and I was like, oh, hyped up and like a battle, like, you know, I'm without a battle, look how I'm acting. So <laughs> imagine the battle. So then I'm like uh, uh, talking about the Sahaba and I said uh, a name of a Sahabi and it was a wrong name. And I said his name like eight times. Like let's say for example, I said uh, Hamza. Hamza did this, and Hamza did that, and Hamza did this, and then he jumped and he did this. Then I, what happens? I go review the video. But before I reviewed the video, at the end of my session, I respected mom, she comes to me. She says, Akhi Majid, Barakallah feek, yani, may Allah bless you. But the one that you're talking about, the this, this and that, is it really Hamza or was it Abu Dujana? I said, oh my God, it was Abu Dujana, you're right. Abu Dujana, how are we gonna edit this video? How are we going to edit this video? And may Allah help us. Jazallah khair, brother Allah. I told him every time I said Hamza, change it to Abu Dujana. <laughs> so he's like, okay, how are we going to do it? So he said, just record it. So I recorded a two second clip, Abu Dujana. <laughs> so then I heard how I said it. I'm like, no, Abu Dujana. No, no. <laughs> Abu Dujana. 
So then, if you guys really want to laugh, go watch the video. <laughs> It's like, then he did this, Abu Dujana. <laughs> he did this, Abu Dujana. Is Adam here or is Adam Sabah? Adam Sabah, he suffered. May Allah grant him Jannah. It's like, bro, I walk around after he's done listening to the lecture. He's like, Abu Dujana. Abu Dujana. Because <laughs> it stands out so much, yeah. Anyhow, fa, thank you for correcting me. And please don't wait till the end of the session. Fi sabilillah. So Musa and Al Khidr, where were they? So they left the boat. And they start to walk and walk on the seashore. على الإيش على الشاطئ. This time, Al Khidr does something very strange, and is getting really out of a human capacity. He sees a group of kids playing, and then he goes Al Khidr. Allah Musa is with him. عليه السلام. He says أتبعك أتبعك means I'll follow you. And then Al Khidr comes to a young boy, takes that young boy. فَقَتَلَهُ And he kills the boy. لا. He, he murders a, a kid that was playing. Not doing nothing wrong. Not even an ounce wrong. Not even like behaving inappropriate. Nothing. Actually playing around other kids on the seashore. Al-Khidr comes and he kills him. Musa cannot handle. Musa did not forget this time. He's like, why would you do this? This is something disastrous. This is so evil. Ya Khidr, what are you doing? He says, Alam. أقول لك. There's more emphasis than the first time. The Arabic language changes. ألم أقول لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا. Did I not tell you that you will not be able to be patient? So Musa عليه السلام he realizes this is above my level. Like this is something that خلاص my capacity is not really grasping. But I'm going to try one more time. I'm not saying above his level in disrespectful way, but like in a way that I'm not able to grasp. So Musa عليه السلام you know what, actually I'll take this part back. I don't want to say it's not up to his level. It's not, I don't think it's uh, appropriate. Anyhow, so Musa alayhi salam is not really being patient. So he says to Al Khidr, Al Khidr, I'm sorry for what I, what I did and I promise you last chance. Give me the last strike, okay? If I ever ask you again or interrupt you or don't wait till the end, هذا فراق بيني وبينك. We will separate. Deal, deal. Fantastic. So they did the killing of the child. Then what happened? Musa and Khidr, they're traveling, and they're traveling, and they're exhausted. This is like, it sounds a little bit longer than the first two trips. I guess with me, longer a little bit. They become hungry, they become thirsty. So they pass by a city or a village. And when they went to this village, they asked for food or drink. And the norm and the culture at that time, in that location, or not located, in that time, if a traveler comes to you, and I'm sure all of us inshallah will do that, if you know for a fact someone is a traveler, nothing shady and so on, you will actually support them, correct? Give them directions, maybe give them a ride if you're very comfortable and so on. But obviously at that time, not many people, shady people like today, may Allah forgive us all and grant us good thought of people, say I mean, And not be naive of course. So Musa alayhi salam and Khidr, they go to these houses, any water, any food, and everyone rejected. Not just to host them, rejected to even open the doors, like here you go. Nothing, nothing, very stingy people. Yani, stingy, stingy, stingy. So Al Khidr, when he was walking, he saw a wall that was about to fall. So he went and he took the wall down and he rebuilt it. Nice, excellent quality. Rebuilt the wall. For what cost? How much did he charge? Free. So Musa tells Al Khidr, a group of people that didn't give us water or food. I have no problem mounting of the wall. I have no problem with rebuilding it. But you could have asked what ajra. Ajra means what? You could have asked for a payment. Right? I charge them for something. I charge them a small amount, whatever. A, a symbolic fee. But any money so we can buy in this and that. So what does Al-Khidr says? You broke the promise in a way, right? هذا فراق بيني وبينك. It's over Musa. That's it. We're done. Let me now explain to you one, two, and three and why it happened. Ready? Ready. Bismillah. He says, as for the, what? First one. The boat. Excellent. As for the boat, there was a pirate or a tyrant on the other end of their path. They were not aware of. That pirate would take, would rob, and sometimes even kill the fisherman, so he can take and confiscate what? The boat. So every boat that passes by, he's like, give me the boat. He threatens them with weapons, whatever, and they surrender, and they lose the boat entirely. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to bless these people by not facing what? The pirate. Allah wanted these people, these people to face a hardship lesser than the hardship they would have faced. Bas. Had the lesson right there. Oh, I had a flat tire. That flat tire might have been a blessing from Allah to avoid a severe car accident. Subhanallah. In the Quran, I'm not actually I was trying to put examples. I'm going to minimize that. This is enough. Something hard happened. Why? Because protect you from something a lot worse and harder. Allahu Akbar. And then you can imagine with this situation here, do you think they found out the wisdom eventually? Very likely, right? Very likely. Why? They sell what? Fish. So imagine there's like a 10 boats, nine taken by the pirate. Nine. So they're like so sad. No, before that, they're so sad. We have no income today. Next day or next week, Allah knows how long. Guess what? There's only one boat that sells fish. Right? We're the only supplier. And these get sold out and they make money. And now they're like, well, Alhamdulillah, we had a hole in that boat. Allah. You start being grateful for Allah for the outcome of the hardship. But at that moment, did they know? No idea. So that's where your true Iman shows. I trust you. What did we begin the story with? On the boat, Musa al Khadr. My knowledge plus your knowledge, remember? Remember, trust Allah's knowledge. So obviously Musa was very impressed by that. Fantastic. Then number two, yalla, what about the boy? Okay, how can you convince me about the boy? Well, the boy that was killed. Al Khadr explains to Musa, and obviously all of us here. أَمَّا الْغُلَامِ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ This child, by the way, you can tell these people were very righteous, right? The fishermen. Get Khadr for free, very kind, very respectful, and so on. And here, the parents were what? True believers. فَخَشِينَ أَنْ يُرْهِقَهُمَا تُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا That child was destined, okay? That child was going to grow up according to Allah's knowledge. Allah did not force him. Allah knows what he was going to do. This child was going to grow up to be a tyrant. Lead a society. Allah Ta'ala knows exactly to what extent. But Allah described something. He was going to be so evil, he was going to cause his parents to become disbelievers. Subhanallah, sometimes the tragedy that kicks into an individual can be so bad. You're stronger than it, inshallah. You're stronger. But sometimes people at a very strong level, but even them, they fall and like, you know, why this is happening? صح? Very righteous people. Why, ya Allah, why? La ilaha illallah. Then you might fall into that circle of kufr. So this child was would have going to be so bad, ruin people's lives, including their parents, and become kuffar. طيب. What happened? Sounds like a good deal. I know it's very painful. It's very painful. But it sounds like a good deal if the parent had the option with putting emotions on the side. Let's know more. Let's know more. Ready to know more? Al Khudr says, what, what's the other part? It's very difficult, guys. There's an additional part. Go ahead. Ahsan. May Allah make you a righteous son. Say Ameen. Ahsan. And Allah blessed the couple with another child that was very, very righteous. Salih. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us all righteous children. Right? So that was the substitution. Now, is it a good deal? They know Allah, Yawm Al Qiyamah, they will be happy for sure. But what did I just say? When? Next week, like the fishermen? Next month? They will know, they will, these parents will never know the wisdom till Yawm Al Qiyamah. So here is an example in your life, things will happen about the boat, you will know why, and like Alhamdulillah, yes, it happened, maybe in a week or a month. And there are things in life that will happen, you will never know why, like it doesn't really make much sense, but you trust God's judgment, so it makes all sense for you, because Allah is the all wise. And this is something you notice, there's a trend here. Protection, protection, and blessings for how great the parents were. SubhanAllah, you see that? So when the people did righteousness, when the people did good deeds, Allah saved them. So don't ever say Allah hates me when you're doing good. It never comes together. So if you're a good person, you work really hard, you do righteous deeds and your, your life is so difficult. Does it happen? You're such a good person. Salah, siyam, you volunteer, you help the people, you donate. But your life gets more and more difficult. Remember this. Because they're not correlated. There's no connection. 
There's no direct connection with how your life in terms of what, let's say financially, health, this has not direct correlation with your faith. It doesn't. Because this is dunya. If you treat it right, you turn it into deen, you grow in faith. You treat it wrong, it drops you. So having good health doesn't mean God loves you. Being sick does not mean God hates you. Is that very clear for all of us? So that's something to appreciate. And I remember I told you this hadith before and I say it again. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah gives dunya dunya to whoever he loves and to whomever he does not love. He gives it to the, those who hate God and he gives it to those who love God, the dunya, the worldly life. وَلَا يُعْطِ الدِّينَ إِلَّا لِمَنْ يُحِبْ But he gives deen only to those whom Allah loves. So rejoice for that good sign I just shared with you. Rejoice. Say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's a sign. So then, this will happen. Last one. What about the wall? This is so cool. The wall, under the wall, were treasures. Treasures, gold and money and all the good stuff. No one knew about it. This gold, this jewelry belonged to who? Two orphans, very young, very young. Okay, I'm trying to see the connection. This wall was about to just a matter of time, maybe a year, two weeks, Allah alam, but very soon. It was about to fall when the orphans were still. Okay, type, okay, let the wall fall. Then you will see the, the gold and the jewelry because they're not very well financially at the moment. They're not. So why, why not have the wall fall and get the money? What do you guys think? Why not? Help me, help me. Go ahead. What happens if they found the money when they're young? Ah, mashallah, tabarakallah, the people may steal it. But why did he say that? Yeah, they're so stingy. They didn't even give a cup of water. Remember? No, not a cup of water. So do you think these villagers in that area, if they see the treasure and the gold, they're like, we'll take care of it till you get older. <laughs> we'll put out your retirement plan. And what happens when they get older? Like many orphans today, their wealth is gone. So how that, till this day it happens. Dad passes away, some guy comes, like, I'll take care of it until you get older. The guy gets older, where's the money? It's gone. And the guy justifies and I worked hard to take care of it. May Allah forgive us, Ya Rabb. So Allah says in the Quran, Al-Khidr says, فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ Your Lord wants the two orphans to become Allah older. When they become Allah older, you need what? Renovations. When they renovate the wall or when the wall is about to fall, they're adults. They see the treasure, they'll handle it right. So sometimes Allah delays your risk provision for a wisdom. You're not ready. You're not ready to be famous. Right? You're doing all the TikTok stuff. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. Right? Do the right things. May Allah protect you. Right? You're not ready for this. You're not ready to be so rich. You're not. You're not ready. Because if you're like, the first thing I'll do with the first paycheck, if I make a thousand dollars a week, يعني, I make 4,000, so that's 50,000 or something a year. That means I can, I can lease a Bentley because a Bentley is 9.99. <laughs> a Bentley is 9.99. So some people think like that. Wallahi, I'm not exaggerating. And that's how they, they're not ready. You're not ready. Very recently, there's a brother whose father passed away. Okay. And that father had some stocks. So that brother, I was talking to him. And he said, man, I just hope, that, you know, this uh, company sell the stocks really quick. I don't want to leave it in the stock market. His father passed away. He left, let's say, for example, $100,000 in stocks. So he said, I want the money. I want the money. So then as he was talking, it was taking such a long time to do what? To sell the? It's taking such a long time. So the brother's like, bro, come on. Why is it taking so long? It took so long that the stocks increased until it became about 250000 because it was in the stock market and they're still doing the paperwork, you know, where's the estate and whatever the case may be. It went from 100 to 250. So the brother, wallahi, he calls me up. He says, Alhamdulillah, I did not get the stocks when I asked you when it was out of 100,000. You see that? It happens many times to us. So these people, if they, they're like, Alhamdulillah, I got the money when I was older and not when I was younger. So then Al-Khidr tells Musa alayhi salam, ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ that is what you were not able to be patient. And Musa, all of what I told you was what? Revelation from Allah. It's all from Allah, it's not from me. 
Now, if it was from Allah, like in what sense? If Musa, if it happened in front of Musa, if this child died, let's say he had a heart attack and he died, would Musa complain about Allah? No way. Allah Ta'ala, no way. But why did he complain? Because it was a human being doing it. So it's okay to question the people. Like, you know, even people who are professionals, adults, teacher, with all due respect, not rudely respect, why did you do this? It's okay. She's not a God. He's not a God. We do mistakes. But when it comes to God and prophets, you don't question much because you know God has control over that. Fair enough? God has control over that. And one of the main moral stories here is to be content with what Allah has blessed you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Irda bima qasam Allah, ulak takun aghna nas. If you are content with what Allah has given you, you will be the wealthiest person on earth. So may Allah make us content with the dunya that we have and we'll still strive. But if we don't get there, no problem. Just like now, just like now during the break or during one of the sessions, a person comes and he studied so hard for the exam. He studied so hard. Let's say for example, he was aiming for a 95. He said, I worked so hard, I studied everything. Human capacity, my level was like peak, peak. My aim is 95, for example, I got 87. It's okay. You are content with 87, but you want to may work harder the next time, no problem. May Allah grant us wisdom. And may Allah, maybe it's a sign that I need to change, right? The major or the direction. And I'll end with this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to say every morning, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Okay, Trent, what does that mean? Oh Allah, I am pleased with you as my God. I am pleased with Prophet Muhammad as my Prophet. And I am pleased with Islam as my religion. What did I share with you earlier in the talk? Try to see the full narration. Is there a reward for saying that? Everybody knows the reward of saying this every morning. Khala, so all of you are ears. Paying attention, every morning, if you say this, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نَبِيَّ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ said, فَأَنَا الزَّعِيمُ I guarantee you, I will hold your hand and walk you to Jannah. خلاص. So now, you don't have to have parents remind you, right? Or it's okay to remind, but may Allah make you the companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Musa a.s. eventually goes back to Bani Israel. Allah knows exactly the, se the sequence of events. But at Bani Israel, there is the case of murder. Someone killed someone from Bani Israel. This is something new in a way. This is shocking. We need to know who did this and why it happened in our final session of the finale, inshallah.